Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to make a GitLab project and import it into AWX, which I might call Ansible Tower because that's that's what it essentially is, except it's the open source version of it. So, um, but essentially, if you want to utilize AWX, you will need a repo to put your playbooks in so that AWX can actually reference it so they can create a template from it. Um, if you don't, it really you, there's really not much to do in AWX at that point. So we'll show you how to do it. Um, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content or want to sponsor me or send me some free swagger hardware, uh, my email is in the description below. So let's get started, guys. So the first thing that we will do here is create a, a new GitLab project. So everything that I have here, there's most likely already been a video about it. If you want to know how I created a self-hosted GitLab, there's a GitLab, GitLab video. If you want to know how I created AWX, there's also an AWX video. So feel free to check those out if you're not, if you're like, well, how do I do that, right? Um, but in this case, we will create a blank project. We'll call it Ansible Playbooks. You can name it, obviously, anything you want. Uh, we'll just put it in the root user, but we could create a group and whatnot. So then we will initialize with a readme. So create a project, super simple, super easy, right? And so what we'll do here is we will actually create an inventory file because we will actually need hosts that we can target, right? Um, so give me one second over here. So we'll create a file and we'll just call it inventory. Also, this could be named anything you want. And we will put, um, uh, let's do like our, ooh, what's a good server? Uh, we have a CA server. Um, there might be a few others that we could do here. Um, essentially, we will we'll probably populate every server that we have in in our DNS zone over. Um, oh yeah, so we have GitLab, uh, Vault Warden, Vault Warden. So I'll I'll add a few here um, just to show you guys. But uh, eventually, I will probably just add everything that I have in my DNS over because essentially this allows me to be able to target any of those machines and actually use them, right? So we'll just add a few and then we we won't create an actual playbook um, in this video because I'm just showing you how you can import the project into AWX, but we'll create a different video on how to create a project and it'll essentially go through the process. So, um, but we'll get some stuff into inventory. So add host and we'll commit that to main. Yep. Okay, so now that we've had that I committed to main. And if we reload, there's an inventory file. We will now log into our AWX instance. So there's a few things to actually do. Um, the first thing that we'll, we'll do here and, oh, I don't know, administration settings, applications. I don't actually know what, what's at on here. Could, Oh, um, oh, settings up here. Oh, no, definitely different settings. Return to previous dashboard. Oh, okay. So we're going to go back to the other interface because it's missing this settings button. I thought that was, that would, that would be there. So the new interface apparently doesn't have that settings button down there. Um, unless it was, what was that? The called it reports. Yeah, no. Okay. It's, it's not there. So you, you got, you can't use the new interface for the settings button right there. Um, but we'll go to settings here. We'll go to job settings. So what we need to do is actually edit the job settings. Um, and this is only if you're doing it in a home lab and you have self sign certs. If you and you and you're using that. So I'm using my step CA as my uh, root certificate authority and. I don't know how to do it in Kubernetes to get that to actually force. So what we're going to do is actually set it so that it doesn't my when it tries to pull from get it doesn't actually verify the SSL and it just will just grab it regardless if if it know if it trusts the set or not. Um, this is not a good security practice, but because it's my home lab, this is this is my walk around. Um, for most cases, if you're using an actual set that is already um, like signed by like DigiCert or Let's Encrypt or something, it'll be, it'll be fine. But if you're doing like your own home lab cert, um, you will probably need to set this unless you get all the, you can import the cert into AWX. Then from here, what we'll do is go to um, credentials and we will add a new credentials. So we'll call it GitLab. 
for the credential. We'll set it to the default organization, which we have, and we will type in a source control for the credential type. Now, this is a good thing to create a service account um, and use because essentially, if you get to a point where, um, like, if I use my account and it gets deleted because I'm like no longer with the company or or for some other reason, this would break. Um, so you want to create a service account to do this. In this case, I'm just going to use my account um, because I know it's my home lab, so I'm just going to do it like that. But if you do this in a production environment, you should create a service account and use that service account to actually access. <laughs> um, so I think it was root. It's the you yeah, root or admin, root. We'll see. <laughs> actually, we can just go like. I think it was just root, and we'll just do it was standard. Other password. Okay, it was the other password. Okay, so we'll save that. So now you have your your GitLab credentials. What we want to do here now is go to projects. So projects you can kind of count as your 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 Git repo, right? Um, because that's essentially what the project is. So we'll click at a project. We'll name the project GitLab default um, source control. We'll do it via Git. There's other options too, but we'll do it via Git. And then you want the URL of this. So you can go here and you can get the URL. Um, by default, we will grab the main branch. So essentially when we all just grab what's ever in main, you can obviously select a different branch if you want, um, but we'll just do main. We'll look at the source control and you just see your credential pop up here for GitLab. And I like to just do clean and delete so that you make sure if you if something got manually edited or whatnot, um, that essentially is cleaned out and deleted. Um, so we'll save that. After saving that, you can see here, there's a job status hits on running, and now it will run. So essentially what happens here is it goes out using my credentials to go to GitLab, does like essentially like a Git poll, and you can see in here that it essentially finishes and works out well. Um, if, if it actually failed, it would give a failure message here though. So that is essentially how you import a project. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is actually inventories. So there's a few ways you can do inventories and I'm just going to do a just kind of default inventory um, and we'll call it home lab and we will click save here and then sources. So each inventory you can specify a source. So in this case, um, home lab, we will select actually sourced from a project. There's other things that you could source from like vCenter or whatnot, um, but I found it easiest to kind of just control it from the project. So um, from here, we'll source from a project, we'll specify the project, which is the GitLab project we just created. And the inventory file is actually the the inventory, like it's just named inventory. You can name this anything you want, but we just name it inventory. So from here, we can click save and hit sync. So when this syncs, it will essentially go reach out to the file, see what's in that inventory file, which we only have three hosts in this inventory file, and then populate it into um, AWX so that you can use it and actually assign hosts to a um, template or something that you want to use to actually run it. So we'll give it a few seconds to let this run. Um, I don't think this should take a very long time. Um, yeah, here it goes. Now it's starting to run. So you can see it. It essentially processes the JSON output, grabs three hosts, imported complete, took 0.1 seconds. So now we actually go to inventories, we can hit home lab, and we can actually go to hosts. And we can see that the CA, GitLab, and Vault 1 hosts were actually imported. So there you go. That is how you set up a project and an inventory from in AWX from a GitLab repository. Um, the one thing to note before we, we hop off, so say for example, you wanted to make an update to this, this project does not automatically sync. You have to manually sync it after you update the project. Um, so you can go into projects and then click sync here. Um, you can also schedule it so that it would sync on a specific schedule, like you can sync it daily so it never gets too far out. Um, and the other way you could do this is you can make it in the GitLab pipeline to do an API call to do the sync after it's finished writing. So we might create a video on that um, because I think that would be very useful for people so that they don't have to manually 
hit sync after they commit. But, um, you know, worst case comes to shove, you commit, hit sync, you're good to go. Not that much more work, right? So, anywho, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.